Hi, I'm Tom B.B. Kauser, owner of Wetland Restoration and Training. I'm going to show you how to use a laser today. And you may wonder, why do I have to learn how to do that? Well, a laser is so important to use in designing a wetland project and in building a wetland. Where do you pick up a laser? Well, hopefully you own one. If you don't, you could rent one from a construction rental business, or maybe you could borrow one from a friend. Maybe there's somebody that's involved with heavy equipment and they will loan it and show you how to use it. So let's get started here and see how to use this wonderful tool. You will need these tools and these supplies in order to design a wetland project and to mark the perimeter of the wetland that you would like to build on the ground. Starting out with, we see the laser. It's called a laser level. Then the receiver for the laser level. And then there is a grade rod. And then we have wire flags for marking the perimeter. And then we have a tripod and we set the laser on top of that tripod. And then of course, notes. I have to record all our observations. We're gonna start by setting up the tripod for the laser. Each one of the legs on the laser will extend. You wanna set up the laser so it is overlooking the wetland that you are designing. You want a clear and open view. I like to set up the base of the tripod about one meter or three feet higher than the wetland area that I'm designing. That way I have a good clear view and the laser is unobstructed. Now that the legs are extended, I'm looking at the platform and trying to keep that level parallel with the surface of the ground. Then I walk around and I push in each leg with my feet. This way it won't blow over. The wind can get strong enough to blow the laser over, and that's not good. Walk around and look at it. Platform looks level. The next step is to set up the laser. Now, the laser sends out a beam, rotates 360 degrees. This is a long range laser set up for construction. Most of the lasers that people end up purchasing are designed for indoor work and they have a very short distance where you can use them. This one here, you can use at least a half a mile away. The laser is still accurate. So I center it on the platform and tighten the holder underneath and it looks good. The next step is to turn on the laser by pressing the green button and I'm listening and I can hear a motor inside and what it's doing is that it is leveling the laser and once the laser is level, it'll start to spin. And you can leave this running all day. They go a long time in one set of batteries. You can hear it's leveling. And if it is set up correctly, it'll start to spin. Otherwise, it gives you an error message. You have to reset it. All right, we're gonna let that laser spin. The next step is to get the rod ready. Now, this is the rod that we're gonna be using, and they come in all different increments. This one is in inches. The laser is set up and it's rotating. It's time to uh, set up the uh, grade rod. So here's the grade rod and here's the receiver. I'm gonna turn the receiver on. And I'm gonna extend the rod all the way. It's in sections. Each one will lock into position with a button. And it starts at zero feet and it goes all the way up to 16 feet. We're gonna use the front scale on the rod. And to do that, you have to open up the clamp on the laser and place it against the rod. Make sure that you aim it so that the laser will reach the receiver. Start lifting. And the receiver is beeping slow because I'm low. There's a solid tone when I'm in line with the laser. And then it beeps fast when I'm high. So I want it to be right in line. I want a flat line tone. I'm hearing that flat line tone. So I'm going to tighten the clamp on the receiver. And then I can turn it and read the number. And I see that is a five foot, eight inches. So we're reading a five foot, eight inches. What does that mean? That means that the laser beam 
is uh, five foot eight inches above the surface of the ground. So now what we can do is move around uh, with this rod and if we go on higher ground, if we walk on at higher ground, we're going to read a lower number because uh, the rod is, the base of the rod is on higher ground. But if we go on lower ground, we're going to read a higher number because the rod is down lower. Now we're going to go to higher ground and take a reading. And after that, we're going to go to lower ground and take a reading and show you how the numbers change. I've walked uphill. I'm going to take another reading with the laser receiver and the grade rod. And there I'm right in line with the signal. And I tighten it on the rod. And it is a four foot eight. So we have come uphill one foot. Interesting. When we were next to the laser, it was a five foot eight. I walked uphill and now I'm reading a lower number of four foot eight. I went uphill one foot. What happens if I go downhill? Let's see what happens to our number. I'm going to find out what the reading will be if I go downhill. Start sliding the receiver up against the grade rod. I start hearing the tone. There's the solid tone right there. Then looking at the top of the clamp, it is a six foot eight. What we have done is we've gone downhill. So our first reading was a 5.8. We went uphill one foot and it read a 4.8. Now I've gone downhill and I'm reading a 6.8. So the lower the ground, the higher the number. The higher the ground, the lower the number. But there's a real problem with using a rod, the front of the rod like this. The problem is you can only reach so far. I can only get a seven foot reading. And so it's really difficult to set up the laser so that you can use it on the front of the rod. There is a better way, and it's called the reverse scale on a grade rod. And we're going to show you how to use the back side of the rod, and then you don't have to stretch like a giraffe. I find it very difficult to take elevation readings using the scale on the front of the grade rod. I can't reach high enough when I go to lower ground. And also, um, it's just very difficult to attach the clamp to the rod. So what I recommend is finding a grade rod that has a reverse scale. And what the engineers have done is that they have printed a scale that is in reverse. It starts high down low and it goes low up high. So in order to use the reverse scale on the rod, I'm going to collapse the rod by pushing these buttons. Push these buttons in and I'm collapsing the rod. And the next step is to take the laser receiver and to attach it right towards the top of the rod. And I just make it even with the top end of the rod. So now I've attached the laser receiver to the top of the rod. So now to take an elevation reading, all I have to do is face the laser and extend the top section of the rod. It's beeping slow because I'm low. Now I'm in line with the laser beam flatline tone. Now I'm too high. We're going to wait till we hear that flatline tone. And I'm reading a five foot eight on the back of the rod. So to read the elevation, we start at the top of the back side of the rod and we follow it down until the two sections meet. And then we read right here where the two sections meet. It is a five foot eight inches. So that gives us a little bit easier way to take a measurement. We don't have to be moving that laser up and down on the rod. I'm going to take a reading uphill and see what happens to the numbers on the rod. I've walked uphill. That means I need to shorten the rod. I need to bring down the top section until I hear the tone. It's beeping fast because I'm high. I'm in line with the laser and I see on the back side of the rod that I'm reading a four foot five inches. I've walked downhill. I'm in a low basin here. 
Now I'm going to extend the top section of the rod. I'm predicting that we're going to read a higher number because we're in a lower spot. So let's start extending that top section. And I listen for that tone. Beep slow because I'm low. It's right on now with a flat tone. And looking at where the second section of rod connects with the third, I'm reading a seven foot nine inches. The re laser receiver and the grade rod are very important tools to use in designing and building wetlands. In fact, I don't think you should build a wetland without having these tools. They're not difficult to use. I would suggest that you pick one of these up, rent one, borrow one, and then practice, and you'll find how easy it is to use this. The higher the number, the lower the ground. The lower the number, the higher the ground. It seems a little bit confusing, but it'll sink in pretty quick. This is Tom Biebikauser. I'm with Wetland Restoration and Training, and I invite you to like the video, to share it, and to visit the website for Wetland Restoration and Training. Thank you.